Well, another gang accused of terrorising Australian families. Tonight, a gang's crime rampage now across the Melbourne's no southern and western suburbs has unleashed teen a four-hour rain of terror. Our cameras join cops terror. on the beat, locking up street thugs who think they're above the law. A group of up to 20 youths has ransacked a supermarket at Cranbourne, showing little fear of being caught. A group of teens make their getaway after storming a suburban coal supermarket. Got your faces! were seen walking towards the coals around 6pm on Saturday before mayhem was unleashed inside. Since 2016, Victoria has been at the centre of a gang epidemic. Or have they? Is the supposed African gang crisis taking place in Victoria a genuine concern? Or is it the media over-dramatising issues to create a moral panic? The term African gangs is key to the issue here. Labeling a group of mostly Sudanese and South Sudanese individuals as African gangs is a gross generalization. It ignores the fact that Africa is a continent, not a country, and is making an outdated link between nationality and criminality. In general, the reporting was massively over-sensationalized. The constant reporting on events led to crimes not connected to gangs, connected to gangs mostly based upon shared African heritage. When in reality, only 1.5% of all offenders in Victoria had Sudanese background. While yes, Sudanese people only make up 0.16% of the population in Victoria, so they are being overrepresented in the crime statistics. But this isn't enough evidence to show the media were correct in their reporting of African gangs. As well as the crime rate in Victoria were down 4.8% in 2017, and youth crime rates have been decreasing for a decade. The entire situation, in my opinion, is an example of a moral panic. Moral panic is a spread of fear, usually based upon the targeting of a group. It's not a new occurrence. The phenomenon has probably existed as long as human society. First coined by Stanley Cohen in his book Folk Devils and Moral Panic. He used the case study of the mods and the rockers as an example of a moral panic created by the media. The mods and rockers were two groups in England during the 1960s. On Easter Sunday 1964, a fight broke out between the two groups. Although the fight at first wasn't seen as much, the media began to exaggerate and falsely report on the groups. Key aspects of the groups, like their clothes and hairstyles, were presented as negative by the media, labelling them as deviant. The media's constant reporting had negative effects on people associated with the group, as police and courts began to have bias against them, and parents saw them as a bad influence. This situation doesn't sound much different than the reporting of African gangs terrorising Victoria. Even in the research for this program, I have seen the effect that this has had on people. Countless of racist comments being written on videos that I used to make the intro. Many are saying to deport these people and their families. Many times ignoring the fact these kids are second generation, making them Australian. So the comments of them failing to adapt don't make sense that they were raised in this country. The discrimination has had a massive impact on the community. Lower employment based upon ethnicity and fears of racially motivated attacks. Both of these problems have led to the Sudanese people having a harder time adapting and falling into a system of poverty and violence. In turn creating the problem the media were reporting. How do we stop this from happening? Well, it's a difficult question. When a large portion of our media is conservative and like to push race narratives because it gets them attention. Maybe one way is to hold big media companies more accountable for the effect they might have on people. Or even having more alternative voices in the industry, increasing diversity. Maybe one day we won't have to worry about these situations, but till then we have to be diligent in how we perceive the media and their intentions.